Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day number four of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I'll be sharing with you a new Squarespace customization every single day until December 12th. Today's tutorial comes from a question that I've gotten a couple of times inside the club. We're talking about how to make the whole auto layout simple list item clickable instead of just having the little button to direct to wherever it is that you want to go to. This customization comes in really handy when you want to be able to have sort of like a larger surface for visitors to click on instead of having to look for that little button inside the auto list. So if this is something that you've been wanting to do for your client projects or something you'd like to know how to do for future client projects, make sure to keep on watching. Okay, so here we are in a 7.1 site and I have an auto list simple section down here where I just have a couple of packages for the different services offered. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure that the whole area, so each of these items is fully clickable instead of just having the button lead to that specific page where we have more information about each of the packages. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to use a little bit of CSS, but the important part here is to make sure that you do have a button in here. So in the settings, you need to make sure that you have a couple of things in place. So first inside the elements tab, you need to make sure that the show button down here is enabled. You don't really need to have the button for the whole section, but you do need to have the show button enabled for each of the different items that you have inside your list. Now for the content, you need to make sure that you have a URL down here and that you have text for the button. So once you have everything in here, once you have everything set up, you can go ahead and just style everything however you want to, and we can head over to the custom CSS window. Now, basically what we're going to be doing here is kind of like a sneaky trick. We're going to be using a pseudo element to be able to create sort of like a clickable overlay that is coming from the button itself. That's why it's important to have it here on the page so that we can have it enabled so that we can actually have a link that we can expand in a way to cover the whole item that we have in here. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at how we can target this button and attach a pseudo element to it that we can later on make sure that covers the entire item. So over here, you can see how we landed on the A element itself, so the button itself. And this one has a couple of classes. We have list item content button, SQS block button element, SQS block button element medium, SQS button element primary. All right, so basically what we wanna do is we want to attach the pseudo element to the A element itself, because this is the one that is carrying the href attribute. So this is the one that is actually carrying the link. So I'm going to be using this little class that we have in here, list item content button, that belongs to auto list buttons. Now, because we're working with the auto list, like the simple one, I'm going to go ahead and include a class that corresponds to that specific auto layout because I don't want anything else to be modified in the other types of layouts. So I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way up here until I find the UL element. So these ones are the ones that you see for the different types of auto layouts that we have in here. Um, Squarespace uses UL elements. And then in here, you can find the specific class that corresponds to each of the layouts that you can use. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. I'm gonna use user items list simple because I only want this modification to apply to the auto list simple layout thing that I have selected in here for this section. Okay, and with this selector in place, and now I'm going to be targeting the buttons within that particular type of auto layout. So let's go ahead and start with the pseudo element. I'm going to be creating here an after pseudo element because I want it to sit on top of everything else and using an after is just going to make that a little bit easier. Now for the content, I don't really want this to have anything. I just want it to be an overlay. So I'm going to leave the content blank and I'm going to set here the height to 100% and the width to 100%. I'm going to give this a slight color so that we can see what we're doing. So let's just set this to sort of like a transparent black color, like so. And then I'm going to use position absolute because I want this to float on top of the rest of the item that we have in here. So let's use position absolute. You can see how that now shows up on the screen. And I want this to be aligned to the left and to the top of the whole container. 
Now at the moment, you can see how the overlay is not really listening to me. It's not really getting aligned to the top left corner of the whole item that we have in here. And that is because the overlay at the moment is using a different container as the guide or the reference point to know what top and left zero are. So it's basically being aligned to a container. We don't really know which one, but a container that seems to be sitting here because it's completely aligned to the top left corner of that area. So let's take a quick look here. And starting from our pseudo element, what we need to do is start looking through the different parent containers holding that element to be able to see which one is acting as the current reference point so that we can change it for the one that we actually want to use. So looking through the direct parent container here, we can see that this one doesn't really have a position. And what we're looking for is any element that has the position set or any ancestor container that has the position set to anything else except static or other than static. Because when that's the case, it means that that element is acting as the reference point, or there is a chance that that one would be the reference point for the absolutely position element. So here I'm just looking through to make sure that this one doesn't have position um, applied in here and it doesn't seem to have it. So let's move on to the previous parent container. So this one here, all right, so here we can see that this on the right side has a position set of relative. So this container is the one that is currently setting that top left of zero, but this is not the container that we want to do that. We actually want this one to set that top and left of zero so that we can align the whole overlay to this top corner here. So what we're going to do is basically stop this one from being considered as a reference point by changing that position from relative to static. So I'm going to be reusing this snippet that Squarespace is using in here just because that's going to make it simpler for us to modify that value without having to force it. And then here, as for the classes they're using, user items list simple. Yeah, it's perfect. So that is going to work for us for what we want to do. Let's just set this to position static. And right now you can see how everything became a mess. <laughs> we have a lot of overlays just all the way around here. They're covering a lot of stuff that they shouldn't be covering, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Now what we need to do is look for our container. So the one that we do want to use as a reference for that top and left of zero. And we're going to give this one a position other than static. Now we're going to be using position relative because we're not really moving it anywhere. We're not really doing anything with it except setting it as the guide. So I'm going to go ahead and target these containers through the list item class. And because list item is a class that is a little bit generic for my taste, I'm going to go ahead and use this user items list simple class just to make sure that I'm only targeting list items within simple list auto layouts in Squarespace. So let's go ahead and just give this a position of relative. And once we do that, you can see how now the overlay sort of shrunk down and now they are attached to the whole container that we have in here. And if we actually like go over it, you can see how everything, it just becomes clickable. So you can basically click on anything. And of course, if we hide that background color, you can't really see anything on your end, like your visitors are not really going to be able to see anything, but if they hover over any area here of this item, they're gonna be able to click on anywhere to go to the same link that the button has. Now, one last thing I want to do here before wrapping things up is that I actually want to do something about this image because you can see here that if I go over this, the image is actually not quite clickable. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the overlay a little bit forward because I'm thinking that the image is not really allowing it to sit on top of it. So let's go ahead and set the set index to something like 10 or something. And that is just bringing the overlay to the foreground. So closer to you instead of having the image on top of the overlay. Uh, for some reason, this is causing a little bit of an issue here. You can see that if I put my cursor on top of the image, now it just becomes really crazy and it tries to swap between a regular cursor and the pointer. So to stop this from happening, what we can do is make sure that the image is not something we can interact with by using pointer events, none on it. So let's go ahead and see how we can target that thumbnail image and make sure that it doesn't interfere with the overlay. So here, let's go ahead and take a look. 
we have this is a whole list item and then in here we have list item content which is at the top and list item media which is at the bottom so i'm going to target the whole thumbnail area down here and once again i'm going to include the class of user items list simple because i want to make sure that i'm only targeting thumbnail areas within the simple list auto layout and then i'm just going to set here pointer events none to make sure that the image is not really clickable on its own and what we're actually interacting with here on the top is the whole overlay that is covering the whole thing so now you can see that if i stand over any part of the whole item everything is just clickable and if i were to click on it it would take me to the home page which is the url that i have for each of these things Alrighty, and there you have it. That's how you can make auto list items fully clickable with a little bit of CSS. I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the rest of this series, and I will see you tomorrow.